I've invited to the global dialogue in Berlin with the President of France, Vice Chancellor of Germany, CEO of Mercedes and OpenAI, execs talking, making deals, planning the future, a bit like in Davos, but with this sharper focus on tech and AI. I'm Will Sentence. If you're new to the channel, I'm the founder of CodeSmith. I've been coding for over a decade, teaching software and ML on front of masters and running an independent tech school, CodeSmith. As someone raised by two public school teachers, I'm deeply invested in making sure the benefits of all the transformation that AI is bringing don't stay closed and locked behind corporate doors. But could Sam Altman's claim of universal prosperity be true? I was doubtful, but I was going to go and listen to what was being said behind closed doors, what's actually being decided when presidents and tech companies come together. So here are three things you need to know about what's being discussed in the global power broker conversations about the future of our world in Berlin and three things I think we should be doing as a society to counteract some of those decisions. One, job cuts that you're hearing about are real. CEO of a unicorn, it's a billion dollar company in Europe, in one of the closed door meetings, talking to OpenAI's exec about using their APIs and cutting like that 300 jobs. I talked to the head of AI at the fourth largest law firm in the world, quote, we're not going to be hiring as many lawyers. The head of a $10 billion tech outsourcer, they just build apps, said, quote, upskilling will not solve this. The best thing that he had seen was Singapore giving every person over 40 the right to a second degree. Anything less than that, he thinks we're going to have an unemployment disaster. Two, but there was a lot of hot air. Leaders talking about things they don't understand, really, saying one thing, but doing another. So one of the stats banded around a lot was between 85 and 88% of all AI projects have had zero return over the last two years, zero economic return. The problem is the person saying that was a McKinsey partner who's trying to advise them to do better, but doesn't themselves, in the way they spoke, understand how these models are working. And then as one of the comments on the Reddit AMA that I did said, watch what leaders do, not what they say. And right now, leaders in public are often saying, leverage AI, use it to empower yourself, all while they're actively distinguishing themselves from AI as professionals. One person did stand out to me. They were the co-founder of Arm, which is one of the largest chip companies in the world and the largest in Europe, 50 billion valuation invested in by SoftBank. And he was a rare technical expert and amazing communicator and was frustrated that general policy discourse wasn't more reason based. And I, I hear that. But imagine again, if the politician or the person making decisions truly understood the things they were working with, the things they were regulating, the things that were being built with AI, that could be a powerful, informed conversation. Three. The decision making inside these rooms is dominated by insiders and big tech firms. So I worked at the UN straight out of school and civic society, that's nonprofits and larger elements of society, engagement was massive, albeit imperfect. And these closed door meetings do not have that. There were 40 quote young voices, both from business schools around the world, and they challenged what's the environmental impact, what's the societal disruption of this change. And the moderators of the discussions were, quote, surprised at their interest in it. The VP of OpenAI was shocked that 20% of politicians they'd met hadn't used ChatGBT. And when asked how they could be more informed leaders in AI, these politicians, what does OpenAI say? Use our tools. This is an insider decision-making group. So what needs to happen to tackle this? These are my ideas, but not only my ideas. These are ideas that came from the AMA I had on Reddit. I didn't, I don't know how this happened, but they got 300,000 views on this technology sub that I did an AMA on. Amazing questions from the tech community about what's going on behind these closed doors. And honestly, the discussion was at least as good as in the quote, halls of power. So go click the link in the description to get the full take by others. But here are the three things that I got out of that AMA and I think can make this a better situation. One, universal, further, deep education, but with real investment in the capacities of people, not just skills, which are changing way too fast. When you think about growing capacities of people, you think that that typically stops kind of after high school. 
But actually, my most life-changing experience is when I went to a coding school and learned to figure stuff out and be imperfect. An engineering mindset. That can happen at any stage in your life and is a valuable growth. We want to give that opportunity to all, would be my suggestion. Two, we need more intersectional people. Engineering and law. Clinical, medicine and AI. And even better, maybe they weren't always doing both. In the 90s, 2000s, you had a lot of salespeople leading technology firms. Pretty shallow take on what they were building. 2000s and the 2010s, you had a lot of engineers running these firms. Maybe they deeply understand the engineering side. Probably better than just selling. The 20s and 30s should be people who understand both the technology and the space they're disrupting. That's the software engineer doctor. That's the AI creative. Three, a time tax on tech. So make the people who are building these tools actually pay with their time. They want to build society's collective prosperity, make them show up. All that capacity building that really empowers people is extremely draining for those struggling through to grow. They can only put up with that if someone who they believe is invested in them is supporting them through it. I've got a whole other video coming on this, but for now, just know tech is always about leveraging oneself. But that alienates leaders from people and the focus this puts back on them, back on the ground, I think is a powerful call to tech leaders. It's why I respect Lucy Kellaway, the Financial Times education writer so much. She went back and became a teacher. Still writes, still a journalist, but now she does so with real substance and real insight. So as that Redditor commenter said, look at what elites do, not what they say.